So one of my clients recently came to me and said, I know you're not going to like this, Carrie, but I have decided I'm cutting out sugar. I said, well, why won't I like that? And he responded with, well, because isn't that dieting? And I said, well, I don't know, is it? What's your motivation? Why are you doing this? He said, look, I feel like crap. I feel like crap all the time. I'm exhausted. I can't think straight. And everything I read says sugar is the cause. I said, okay, sounds like we have an experiment. That would be the difference between intuitive eating and dieting between my message and the rest of the world in those books is that what we were trying to do with this gentleman was say, okay, is it sugar? Well, the only way to do that is to experiment. So that's what happened. He went off and he took out sugar. Now, I encouraged him to keep a journal, to talk about some of the food thoughts. We know that restriction leads to um, an amount of value of food. So if I'm not allowed, <laughs> they've done studies with this, the red candies, they told the children not to have the red candies. What do you think the, the kids ate the red candies, right? They didn't eat the rest of them, they ate the red ones. <laughs> we as humans like to have what is rare and scarce right? A Lamborghini, a beautiful mansion. If everybody has one, it's not so cool anymore. So, so be aware while you're doing this of what kind of thoughts show up around sugar and around the kinds of foods you're not having. Notice how you're feeling when you're sitting at the dining room table or at the restaurant, everyone else is ordering a dessert. How are you feeling? What thoughts are coming forward? Not in a judgy way, in an observing way. This is what scientists are meant to do in an experiment, right? Watch what happens. Be super curious. So off he went, this is what he did. He came back for a follow-up in two weeks and said, I feel amazing. I'm like, there we go, that's pretty cool. What are you gonna do? He said, well, I'm gonna stick with it. I said, okay. You know, part of an experiment though, and to really know if it's the sugar, is we need to put it back in. At some point, you need to see what happens when it re-enters your body. He said, okay, not ready to do that yet. Give me another few weeks. No problem. So off he went again, came back for his next follow-up. I said, how's it going? He said, it wasn't sugar. So what do you mean it wasn't sugar? He said, well, about a week after I sort of slipped back in and I started to feel like crap again and the brain fog was there, but I hadn't changed anything. I went, oh, isn't that interesting? We forget that as humans, we're so complicated. <laughs> and the idea that one thing can alter everything is a bit crazy, right? <laughs> but it's what we think. We, every book that I've read recently, and I was reading something about lectins recent, there's, anyways, that's a whole other, there's all these single ingredients, mono things that are out in our world that are supposedly the magic to what's going on. And it rarely, in my clinical experience, is in fact the truth. We cycle, women especially, men do too, which is a little bit of what I think he was experiencing, but women, it's much more clear, right? With our cycles, we have different cravings, we have different moods, different requirements for sleep. Everything shifts and we can watch it ebb and flow. And when we embrace that and learn how to surf those waves, oh, so much power is available. Anyway, so with this gentleman, I said, okay, so no sugar didn't make a difference in the long run. So what have you done? He said, well, <laughs> I had a butter tart for lunch and I have pie for dessert. And I said, oh, okay. So <laughs> that's a normal part of restriction is that swing the other side. Please try not to judge that and interpret that, that suddenly this is an addiction or this is a problem and see, I have no control. It is a natural thing. When you haven't had something for a long time, when it's been off limits and you're allowed, that's the proverbial saying, the kid in the candy store. They go ballistic and they overconsume, but it will level out. And sure enough, it did. So, you know, he's eating less sugar than he did before this experiment. Um, but the point is, playing with your food is one of the beautiful things that can happen when you're peaceful with food and peaceful with your body. His intention was to be kind and respectful to his body. His intention was to be better, to be healthier, to be more alert. It wasn't about changing his body from a weight perspective. Now don't get me wrong, <laughs> if he had lost some weight, he would not have been complaining. And that's fine. But the major goal was to be the best version of himself. 
So is nutrition, is are we just saying forget it, you never experiment? Of course not. Some people need therapeutic diets. If you have high blood pressure, well guess what? We're going to talk about what kind of nutrition can best support that. If you have food sensitivities, if you have food allergies, if you have celiac disease, if you have IBS, if you have all these things, obviously your diet is going to impact how you feel overall. My experience though is that once someone has gone through all the steps of intuitive eating, they are honoring their hunger and their fullness. They are emotionally being taken care of without the use of food most of the time. <laughs> that they are moving their bodies, that they're doing all of these things. It frees up the ability to make these choices based on how they're going to feel. And that is beautiful because that's them taking care of themselves. And that is so different than the YouTube video I watched about these lectins and looking at that kind of diet and it's so highly restrictive and nowhere in the diet is it built in that I'm going to experiment with my body. Does it make a difference if I eat that food or not? Because we're not all the same. Every body is very different and that's great because that's exciting. But it also means that there isn't anyone out there who can tell you exactly what you need. So you are left with the choice. Do you want to learn the language of your body? Learn to communicate and be respectful and loving? Or do you want to take someone else's language and impose it on your body and be forever getting things lost in translation? So if I'm speaking your language, then please leave a comment below. Tell me what speaks to you. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a video.